What's up guys? I just want to make a quick video uh, answering a lot of the questions that I had uh, through the install of a Terminator X on a Fox body. I got my uh, coupe all torn up behind me so it's a good time to dive in and uh, show you guys some of the ins and outs. Um, that way when you're doing the install, super easy, super straightforward like it should be. All right, I got everything strung out in the car here. Um, Terminator X goes under the passenger seat, pretty straightforward, everybody knows that. Um, first thing is power and ground to battery. Um, my car has the battery in the back, so I've got the cable running underneath the carpet, down along the kick, all the way under the back seat. So if we go back here, um, Holly basically gives you um, the, it's just two wires and they give you the ring terminals and these will just go direct to your battery. That's the only two things on this part of the harness is positive and negative, And they tell you to run it straight to the battery. So mine's in the back. Um, otherwise you just run it around to the front and the uh, stock location. So pretty straightforward. Um, you just put the uh, connectors on your wire right there and you're ready to rock, put it on your battery. So back in the kick panel here, you'll have um, three really, really important wires uh, coming off your main harness. Um, this is your green, your 12-volt uh, fuel pump. Um, you'll also have your red and white candy stripe. That's for switched power. Um, and then you'll also have this black, which is chassis ground. So what you're going to do, um, if you have a 91 or earlier model year car, um, your relay is actually easy. It's underneath the passenger seat over there. Uh, but for 92 and 93 cars, our relays are part of the main harness, which we obviously get rid of. So as long as you're not running a 15 amp fuel pump or larger, you can cut this green yellow stripe wire right here on your green connector and run the fuel pump from the Holly harness right into that. So I've just got a little butt connector here, not really finished up yet, but uh, if you connect to that wire, you will have fuel pump. It runs right to your inertia switch. You'll keep your inertia switch working, which is nice. Um, so yeah, pretty straightforward. Uh, chassis ground, black, um, really self-explanatory. It goes, if you can see that, right where your factory chassis ground went. I, I use the same bolt, um, everything, same spot. And then finally, it's hard to see, I'll go around the car, but the red and white candy striped wire runs over to the fuse panel underneath the driver's seat um, and I got it hitting off fuse number 18. I think that's what Holly tells you in the instructions. Um, as far as that go, that fuse is your gauge cluster. Um, so uh, just get a fuse tap there and you'll be ready to rock. All right, so we got the intake back on the car. I've already done my first start and everything's kind of bundled up back here, not really cleaned up because I was just kind of going for a first start, uh, checking all the boxes. Um, I'm not gonna show you obviously how to lay out the entire harness. Um, it's kind of up to you. Um, the one thing I will point out that Holly doesn't, I don't think, do, do a great job of showing you is uh, fuel pressure and oil pressure. So the harness comes with connectors for your fuel and oil pressure, but uh, I guess they're not required. I don't know, Holly doesn't send you the sensors for fuel and oil pressure. Um, so if you want that in your data logs or on your uh, Terminator X little screen. Um, you gotta go out and get your own. So um, right here on your fuel pressure, um, I did low dollar, same pressure sensor for both fuel and oil. Um, these were about 32 bucks uh, online. So uh, for the fuel pressure, you just gotta take out your Schrader um, and put a little eighth inch adapter, screws right in there. And uh, you can hook right up to a regular low dollar um, sensor. Uh, I'll put that in the uh, description. So the next thing is your oil pressure sensor. So um, what Holly kind of tells you to do right here in this picture is um, to keep your factory gauges and buy an oil pressure sensor, make kind of a brass T there. But uh, I don't know, I think it looks a little gaudy in my opinion. So uh, kind of what I did here was went down here and got an oil filter sandwich uh, from Glow Shift, if I can get it focus in here. Uh, never used one before. Might leak like a sieve, I don't know, but I think it looks a little bit cleaner. You have the clearance on, I think, any Fox body to run that. So um, I went with that. And then, of course, another low dollar um, pressure sensor. Probably the most confusing thing about this whole install is how do I keep uh, factory TFI, factory coil, and all my gauges working? Uh, what do you need to retain? Uh, the Holly does a pretty good job of telling you what to retain. Um, if you're an 87 to 89 car, uh, use this because these are going to be 90 to 93, I guess, wires, um, wire colors, that is. 
they give you this gauge in the instructions, but I'll go ahead and dumb it down for you. It's uh, your, I think this is a C110 is what this connector is called, this brown connector in your uh, passenger fender well here, or driver fender well rather. Um, you've got four wire collars that you need uh, on a 90 to 93. Uh, white, red, uh, red with white, red with green, and I believe that's a tan with yellow. Let's go ahead and start at the coil. So you're gonna to have to cut um, your plug off from your main harness for your factory coil. Um, some people wire direct to the coil and just eliminate the plug, uh, whatever you wanna do. I chose to keep my plug. Um, so your two wires running to your coil for a 93 car um, are red, green, 12 volt switch to power your coil, and then your tan with yellow stripe, which is your tack signal. Um, that's your tack signal coming from that C110 connector, right? The wire we kept. Um, those, you just run those right back to your coil. That's it. Pretty straightforward. Um, nothing too crazy there. That's just exactly what it was stock. Um, you just have to cut this connector, and then you have to cut that connector um, off your factory harness to be reused. And then, you know, you can run new wires if you want or try and salvage the wires from the factory harness. Depends on how much you want to cut it up. Uh, that's your call. And then finally, the one last thing for your coil. I've kind of got it loomed up here. Uh, let me pull this back. This is the white wire coming off of the TFI jumper uh, for your TFI ignition. So on the Holly harness, you have your plug-in for your TFI if you're running TFI. Um, and then there's a little white wire uh, that runs off of that. So you take that white wire. I forget exactly what uh, the label or what it's called. Um, it is not the points wire, but you take that wire that runs right off this and run it all the way back. And I have this, it's hard to see behind the tape, but it is spliced in to our TAC signal wire. Uh, all that does is just gives your Holly, um, your RPM signal, I believe. Uh, so you can see RPM on your gauges and whatnot. That's going to be kind of hard to see because I got my intake back on. But uh, right here, this is your factory coolant temp sensor. You're going to have to go and you're going to have to cut this off, find this little plug, and the oil temp, which is way down here there it is uh right here on your factory oil temp sensor um you got to cut these little guys off there luckily they're very close on the main harness so it's hard to screw up i think they actually run right together um you can again peel that main harness back and try and get enough wire to make it back to this connection um i think you got to go through the salt and pepper shakers and stuff like that so it's kind of a mess but uh, I just opted to cut these off. So your coolant temp is your red white and got it loomed up there. And then your oil temp is um, the uh, white red that you see there. One of the last things your Holly is going to need is uh, vacuum, source of vacuum. Especially if you're using your one bar map, um, which runs inside the car. Uh, me, my, I'm a factory non-AC car, so my AC spot on my vacuum tree uh, was unused, so I teed off of that. Uh, but really, vacuum is going to be up to you um, to route. Uh, for what it's worth, I think I used a 932nd size vacuum hose, and it hooked up uh, to the Holly's connection pretty well. Um, it's been working, so. Last thing I'll show you is the airbag harness. I don't have mine back in yet, but uh, if you want to retain airbag functionality on your car and get rid of the light that'll probably pop up, uh, you got to cut this out of your harness. Um, I don't think I've seen a video where anyone gives you a close-up or wire color. So um, here's your connector here, uh, one of the connectors. Um, the four wire colors that run through this are uh, red, white stripe, uh, looks like purple, blue stripe, uh, pink with orange stripe, and uh, purple with green stripe. And again, this is a 93 car. I believe this is probably going to be only the same um, for your 90 to 93 cars. Um, and then your other two connectors, which run into the engine compartment um, right here. So uh, no one's really gave a close up of what those look like. So I was a little confused when I was cutting those out, but uh, other than the monotony of cutting it out of the harness, it's not too bad. That's about it guys. I just wanted to show you the fuel pump and really the coil and uh, factory gauge setup among a couple other things, especially for a 93 car. Cause I had some questions and had to do some research. Um, if you have, Further questions or want like a full in-depth install video, I'd go watch uh, Fixed Body Mustang's video. It's really, really good um, for kind of, you know, everything plugging in and a more how-to in-depth video. But uh, for just wire connections and straightforward answers, uh, hopefully I uh, helped you out a little bit and saved you some time on your install. Thanks.